Hello world. Happy New Year. Today I'm going to show you some use cases of a uh, easy to use and free uh, translation library on Python. So welcome to the 163rd video on my channel where I'm building my own digital assistant named Shane like Jarvis from the Iron Man movies and comics. Please consider subscribing to my channel if you want to continue watching me build my digital assistant and uh, let's go right into the code. So I was looking for a free translator to use with my um, digital assistant and I found this pretty cool one that incorporates um, almost all of the translator services that you could possibly need and it's called deep translator and so um, you just pip install deep translator so in PyCharm, you can go to File, Settings, your Python interpreter, this plus, and you search for uh, Deep Translator right here. This is by Nidal Bakuri. Let's go ahead and pip install that. All right, and then it offers you a bunch of services. And so um, you're going to need an API key to do the same things I did in my video. So if you just go to detectlanguage.com, and so uh, you can go to that, and you just sign up for your free API key here, and it's just a simple sign up. Um, if you're new to my channel, this might not make sense, but since I have a YouTube channel, I keep all my API keys in a separate file called keys. Um, I'll show you where to insert your API key if you don't have a file, um, but don't copy and paste this, um, this code right here. Then uh, import requests, um, and I'll show you why. And then we're going to, from BS4, import beautiful soup. And I'll show you why there. And I just want to give credit to the um, creator of this. So again, you can uh, check this out, Deep Translator. I'm in the, his documentation. And so first, we're going to look at the different types of languages supported. So um, I'm simply doing the quick start instructions here. And we're going to look at... Um, Oh, the supported languages here. So I'm using this code here and I'm just going to get a dictionary of the languages supported and then print that out. Okay, so it boasts 139 languages and so it uses both the word and a um, uh, abbreviation of it. And so just know that the abbreviation might be um, kind of dramatically different than what you're thinking. And for example, we'll be using Spanish through most of this video, just because I've always wanted to learn Spanish. And the abbreviation is actually ES, and that's uh, for Espanol ES. Uh, where did my marker go? All right, and then... I would also like to start implementing somehow into my YouTube videos some Hindi because the majority of my, or not the majority, but nearly 50% of my um, viewers speak Hindi or are from India. And so welcome. Hi. Please leave a like if you're from India and uh, leave a comment shouting me out if you're from India. Much love to everyone there in India. So those are all the languages supported. So what's cool about this library is that you can pass the real, the word of the language or the abbreviation. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So first we're just going to um, translate one, um, one text, right? One simple text. And we're going to use this single detection method. So from deep translator, import Google Translator and so comma single detection. So um, and to do that, that's why you need this API key. So if you denude, um, 
instead of that keys file, you would just pass your API key, API key here in a string like this. So, um, but I am using my actual API key as a variable. So first you're going to have a text. Um, so my text equals buenos dias. You can also pass it specifically here if you wanted to. Um, and so we're going to say the language equals single underscore detection, pass it this text, and then we're going to pass it the API key. And we can see what that looks like here. So we're going to print. There we go. Let's check it out. And it simply passes ES for Espanol. So we're going to use that variable or I'm um, use that output and pass it. Um, well, actually we don't need to pass it here. I just, that's just a method you can do to detect the language. So then we're going to do a variable and I just use this translated because that's what the, um, that's what the documentation does. So the translated equals Google Translator and we imported that up here. The source is auto, so it's going to auto detect the source. Um, but you could put Spanish if you wanted to, so it, it knows. The target equals English, because I want it in English, dot translate, and then we're going to pass it the text here. And then we're going to print translated. So the reason why I got the language is, um, you know, if I wanted faster results maybe, I would pass it the um, the language here. So I would just say source equals um, maybe lang and just pass it like that. And I press the insert key, which I shouldn't have. But we'll just leave it as auto. So let's print out that translated. So we're going to translate buenos dias. There you go. Good morning. So that's kind of cool. But, you know, what if we have a lot of stuff? So this is just an example of a, a text file that I have um, of a Spanish article from Yahoo that I have. And so it's just a text file that... Uh, yeah, I just took the first paragraph from a uh, Yahoo article. So I'm not going to say that because it's embarrassing reading Spanish uh, on my YouTube channel. And we're going to pass this Spanish article dot text. So we're going to say file equals open. And then you're going to pass it this text file. So if it's in your project folder, you don't have to put the complete path. You can just put the Spanish article dot text. We're going to read the bytes, so RB, and then the text equals file.read, we're going to call that, dot decode, and then the encoding is UTF-8. And the reason why you do this is if you don't do this decode, you're going to get a bunch of errors because it doesn't, you're going to, it doesn't know, um, without telling it to use UTF-8, it's going to throw a Unicode error at this I with an exclamation point or the um, accent, same with this A, and you're just going to get errors. Then, same thing up here, we're going to do translated equals Google Translator. Source, we're just going to auto-detect. Target is English. And then we're going to translate the text. Now, there is a um, method called translate file, but um, I wasn't able to successfully use it because of the uh, you could do this as well because I was I kept getting the um, Unicode error and so I found that this is the best way so let's translate this right here this text file and there you go so digital assets have posted a series of lower lows and lower highs since peaking in market value of around three trillion dollars in November so this is a finance article from yahoo.com, um, the Estados Unidos portion of it right here. And so all I did was copy and pasted this into a text file. 
right but it's kind of silly to copy and paste into the text file so what we can do is use beautiful soup to read this website for us and that's what we'll do in the next method so now we're going to read from a web page so we already imported requests and um, imported beautiful soup and so first we're going to pass it the URL the URL is here so just copy and paste that then we're going to get the text of that so request.get pass it this URL and just get the text um, then we're going to pass it to a variable called soup equals beautiful soup we're passing it this HTML text and then we're going to uh, pass it this HTML dot parser then for every paragraph in this soup dot find all we want to look for the P for paragraphs so that's a we're looking for this HTML tag so right click on what you want you don't have to highlight it like that but you can inspect and it should take you here to the paragraph tags we can expand that right here there you go and then we scroll down here inspect it and this is another uh, paragraph P for HTML so for each one of those we're going to translate it so translated equals Google Translator the source is going to auto detect target is English dot translate and we're going to pass it the paragraph dot text um, make sure you put the paragraph dot text on here or else you will get this uh, the HTML tag like this and it will throw an error the uh, deep translator and then we're going to print the translated text so let's uh, expand this and now beautiful soup is going to get that web page uh, it's going to scroll through each of the web page and then for every paragraph this Google Translator using the deep translate library is going to translate it and then it's going to print the translated words so cryptocurrencies have been on a dizzying journey in recent months but it turns out they haven't really traveled very far that's what this says right here las criptomonedas han protagonizado and that's what that says and then it basically translates the rest of the web page anything with a PHTML tag for paragraph it's going to scroll through all of it and uh, translate it into English if it's already in English it's fine because the source is auto it's going to auto detect it so for example this one I believe Ivanka Trump Donald Trump subpoena in asset probe I think that was one of the links yeah, here we go. So it's already in English. So I'm pretty excited that this is so easy. Um, a lot of credit, or all the credit, goes to uh, this user right here um, who created this. And I think in the next video, I'm going to use OpenCV to, you know, utilize my webcam just like if I was wearing some sort of suit like Iron Man and read the text from something and pass it to this Google Translator just like some of the most popular iPhone apps and stuff like that. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like it if you did and uh, thanks for watching. Goodbye world.